Hello YouTube, welcome to this, the 15th video on the Land Rover Discovery 2 V8 engine rebuild and now the second video on diagnosing the problem. You saw in the last video I tried uh, adjusting the tappet clearances uh, or tappet preload or whatever it's called in many ways and failed. So that was already uh, a speculation. It definitely sounded like tappets or something top end but I had no evidence that that was the problem. So uh, I'm looking for evidence. I'd skimmed a lot of the heads. They'd already been skimmed and I had them skimmed again. And the block was skimmed and skimmed again because there was a, a defect in the surface. So both me and a friend of mine, uh, Tony, independently came up with the idea that maybe the valves were hitting the pistons. Um, <clears throat> deep down, I sort of knew that problem is more likely to occur at high RPM. So to hear it at idle is a bit unusual, but... I don't, I was like, what the hell else can it be? I, it was like the only idea I had. Um, so I stuck a camera in uh, the bores, all eight of them with the park plugs out, and I couldn't see any evidence of contact, but um, there's still the chance that it was just t kissing the piston. The valve was just touching the piston so lightly. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> I just dove straight in there and had the heads off. I took a load of measurements. Uh, you can see this spreadsheet here I'm showing you where I measured all of the uh, the gasket thickness, the uh, piston distance below the piston, the distance the piston is below the deck, and then the height of the valve and so on. And I did that for a number of different positions uh, uh, around top dead centre and found the closest point. I think it was 0.88 millimetres. So while the heads were off, I still didn't see any evidence. Here's a picture of the piston. Look, I still didn't see any evidence of contact. But... I was in there, that was the theory, so I might as well uh, add some clearance while I was there um, to improve that situation. So this was a very, very low point for me. I, I'd got the engine apart again, heads off, and uh, and I still wasn't even sure I was fixing the problem. But while I was there, I was going to do it. So please uh, understand there's no video footage at all, but there's a lot of images here and I'll talk through them. So once I had the engine open, and I was going to do the job anyway, uh, here you can see the angle is... Uh, the valve is inclined at about 11 degrees to the piston, so it's only the edge of it that would make contact. That's further complicated by the fact there was a bowl in the piston, but it would still be very near this top point. So I can uh, add a thicker head gasket, which I didn't really want to do, uh, for various reasons. Or I can remove material from the valve, or I can remove material from the pistons. So in the end I went with both. So you can see here is a hugely amplified image of a valve, and the important things. I mean, a valve generally snaps here if it's going to snap. They don't really fail around here. This, um, So this surface is important here because it goes into the valve guide. This surface here is very important because it's the valve seat and that's what obviously seals the, the gases in the combustion chamber. So you can't touch that. And the rest of it is, you, you see when you hold on your hand, they're not accurate surfaces. This is an accurate surface and this is an accurate surface and they have to be accurate in relation to each other. But the rest of it not important. There is a thickness here to this valve and obviously on modern sodium filled valves things are a little different but here uh, in the simple stainless steel valve there's a thickness here and of course these parts get hot especially on the periphery the edge of the valve so there is a thickness of material which means that the heat is able to transfer into the valve. And of course stainless steel is not a very good uh, heat transmitter so <clears throat> I'm going to remove material from here you can see in this lower diagram I basically just put a bit of a radius on here a bit of a chamfer so I've tried to keep a bit of thickness here uh, and keep that thick, but just just basically nick the edge off it. Yeah, so I took them out and I uh, and I put them uh, in a drill so that they were spinning and I held an angle grinder very slowly, very gently against this corner so it removed material evenly. You can see the shiny uh, the shiny surface is obviously where I've re removed material and it follows almost uh, almost exactly that profile I showed you. So I was able to add uh, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 of a millimetre or something of clearance here, um, I did it on all 16 valves. So the next thing to do was to remove a little bit of material from the piston. The inlet valve gets closest to the piston because it is a larger diameter. So yeah, if the inlet valve is bigger, you can see that it will be closer to the piston. So that was the more critical one. So I just put a pocket in the piston for the inlet valve. I used a piece of cardboard, cut it to almost exactly the same size as the head gasket, say. Used two drill bits that are the right size for the um, dowel holes in the head. So I can align that cardboard accurately. And then I marked with some blue pen on the back of the valve. I think you can see some residue of blue pen there. Onto the piece of paper. 
and cut some holes. So that's, uh, because this is symmetrical, that hole, if I flip this cardboard over, will be in the same position for this cylinder. And then the second one I've done would do the two outside cylinders. So that's all I needed was those two holes and those two bits of cardboard. And I was then able to translate that onto the piston top and um, draw, just put a, here's my paint pen, put a bit of paint um, on the piston top to indicate where the valve would be. So this is the result of that. You can see that I've marked up if there was contact, that is where the inlet valve would contact the piston. So the next thing to do is remove material from the piston. So I covered the engine in cling film. There's actually um, several pieces of cling film there, making up a huge covering. And I smeared grease all around the piston bowl into the into the gap between the piston and the bore, and then put a, a smattering of grease all over it, really, and then pushed the um, the cling film against the grease. And then I did my my grinding. So you can see I've been in there with a die grinder, um, buzzed a, a little bit of a. Uh, recess in there. Uh, the die grinder cut through the cut through the cling film immediately, as you can see, uh, and all the swarf came on the outside. Really, there's a tiny bit in there, but most of the swarf is on the outside. So then I removed that piece of cling film, cleaned it up, and uh, actually it was very effective at making sure nothing went in the engine. So that was that. Did it all late. Put the cylinder heads back on, and uh, and tried it again. Uh, there is, in fact, a video of the engine running. So here it is. Start it up, run it for a period, and um, yeah, and then uh, you'll see. Thanks for watching this video, folks. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. The next video is much better. I was in a much better mood because I believe that I might be actually finding some evidence of a problem. Uh, and uh, there's loads of video content. So tune in again. Thanks for watching this far. Bye for now.